Now that we have covered some of the main elements and characteristics of narrative performance, we will cover two small but very significant elements which you will incorporate into your performances. They are introductions and transitions. When it comes to narrative performances, the performer plays a crucial role in guiding the audience through the experience. Just like a tour guide in a new city, the performer directs the audience's attention to the significant parts of the performance. One way the performer does this is by pointing towards the purpose of the performance. Think of it as a compass that helps the audience navigate their way through the narrative. By highlighting the importance of certain scenes or themes, the performer ensures that the audience doesn't miss out on the key elements. In a sense, the performer also acts as an author. While they may not have written the original script or story, they have the power to shape the way it is presented. Through their performance, they can add layers of interpretation and meaning, providing the audience with a unique perspective. To separate these guided portions from the actual literature pieces, the performer breaks away from the script. They directly address the audience, inviting them to engage in a more interactive experience. This allows for a deeper connection between the performer and the audience, as they both actively participate in the narrative. These guided portions can take two forms, introductions and transitions. Introductions serve as an opening to a new segment of the performance, setting the stage and preparing the audience for what's to come. They provide context and background information, ensuring that the audience is fully immersed in the narrative. Transitions, on the other hand, serve as bridges between different parts of the performance. They help smoothly navigate from one scene or theme to another, ensuring a seamless flow. Transitions may include personal anecdotes, explanations, or reflections that tie everything together. To begin, let us start off with understanding the characteristics and use of the introduction. An introduction is the beginning of a performance or the opening statement of a piece. Its purpose is to provide the audience with a clear understanding of the relevance of the literature piece and to establish a connection between the piece and the audience. There are several key elements that make up an effective introduction. They are the attention getter, title and author, message, theme or lesson, personal connection statement and the background information. Let us take a brief look at each of these elements. Let us begin with the attention getter. In an engaging performance, the attention getter is a crucial element that captures the audience's attention right from the start. There are several effective ways to achieve this. One approach is to use a teaser, a short portion of the literature you are going to perform, to create a sense of intrigue and make the audience eager to hear more. This can be a captivating excerpt that leaves them wanting to know what happens next. Another attention-getting technique is to ask a thought-provoking question that relates to your topic. This stimulates the audience's curiosity and encourages them to stay engaged as they contemplate the answer. Quoting a relevant and impactful statement can also be highly effective. A well-chosen quote that highlights the essence of your literature piece can captivate the audience and make them eager to hear your interpretation and analysis. Startling the audience with statistics or strange facts is another attention-getting strategy. By presenting surprising information that they may not be aware of, you can immediately grab their interest and make them curious to hear more. You can also refer to recent events to create a shared experience with the audience. By discussing a current issue or event related to your topic, you not only make them aware of the timeliness and importance of your subject but also establish a connection between their own lives and the content of your performance. Historical references can also be effective in capturing attention. Sharing a significant historical event that relates to your topic can evoke interest and create a sense of importance and relevance. Lastly, humor can be a powerful tool when used appropriately. A well-placed joke or humorous anecdote can relax the audience and make them more receptive to your speech. However, it is important to know your audience and be mindful of what they will find humorous, as poorly executed humor can backfire and turn the audience against you. By utilizing these attention-getting techniques, you can start your speech on a strong note and ensure that the audience is fully engaged and eager to hear what you have to say. Next, we have the title and author. These are the basic details that should be mentioned at the beginning of any introduction. The title and author of the literature or performance being discussed should be clearly stated. This provides the audience with an immediate reference point and helps them to understand what they will be experiencing. Third, we have the message, theme, or lesson. The introduction should also communicate the overall message, theme, or lesson of the performance which lets the audience know the reason for the performance and why it is important for them to pay attention and listen. By highlighting the central idea, 
the introduction sets the stage for what is to come and helps to engage the audience's interest. Fourth, is the personal connection statement. To create a personal connection with the audience, the introduction should include a sentence that explains why the literature, message, or theme is personally important to the speaker. By using I, or me, the speaker can show that they have a genuine connection to the material, which can help to capture the audience's attention and make them more receptive to the performance. And lastly, we have the background information or context. If the piece being performed is part of a larger work or has specific historical or cultural significance, the introduction can provide some background information or context which can help bring the audience up to speed and give them a better understanding of the literature or performance. By providing this additional information, the introduction can help the audience to fully appreciate what they are about to see or hear. When it comes to creating an introduction, there are several guidelines to keep in mind. Firstly, it is important to make your message, theme, or lesson a universal one that can resonate with everyone. This will be influenced by your audience and your analysis of what will resonate with them the most. Secondly, it is recommended not to give too many details regarding your plot in the introduction. Instead, save those details for the actual performance. The introduction should serve as a teaser, leaving the audience intrigued and wanting to see more. Furthermore, it is crucial to remember that the introduction is about you as the performer, not about your persona or character. This is your opportunity to connect with the audience on a personal level and establish a connection with them. In terms of length, it is advised to keep the introduction no more than 10% of your overall performance time. This allows you to focus on the main content of your act without taking up too much time at the beginning. Additionally, it is important to be on the lookout for introduction material. This could be a quote, a story, or an anecdote that sets the tone for your performance and engages the audience from the start. Being creative is also encouraged when it comes to creating your introduction. Experiment with different openings and find a unique way to captivate your audience's attention right from the beginning. Lastly, it is recommended to finish your performance analysis first and then work on your introduction. Understanding your act and what you want to convey will help you craft a more effective and engaging introduction. Now that we have covered introductions, let us move on to transitions. Transitions are like bridges that connect different parts of a piece together. They are like signposts that help guide your audience through your performance. There are a few reasons why transitions are important. Firstly, they help your audience shift their focus and attention to a new idea or topic, almost like a gentle nudge that prepares them for what's coming next. Secondly, transitions are particularly useful when you are switching from acting as a character or persona to speaking directly to the audience, providing a smooth transition from one mode of performance to another. Transitions can also be a way for you to express your own thoughts and ideas by giving you a chance to share your personal insights or reflections on the piece you are performing. This can help create a deeper connection with your audience and make your performance more engaging. However, it's important to note that transitions may not always be necessary, especially if you want to maintain a certain rhythm or flow in your performance. Sometimes, the momentum of the piece may be enough to carry you seamlessly from one part to another without the need for explicit transitions. So, it's up to you as the performer to decide whether or not to incorporate transitions based on the specific needs and goals of your piece. Though transitions may look a bit different in literary performances than speeches, you can still use the same types of transitions often used in speeches and can form them for your performance. Let us take a look at some types of transitions you can use in your performances. The first type are transition statements. These are words or phrases that indicate the completion of a thought and the introduction of a new one, and serve as alerts to the audience that the speaker is about to discuss something different. Another type is internal previews. These statements occur within the body of the speech and let the audience know what the speaker will be discussing next. Unlike transition statements, internal previews provide more detailed information about what is to come. Internal summaries, on the other hand, serve to recap the main points or ideas that have been covered so far, emphasizing and reinforcing the previous information while reminding the audience of what they have just heard. Internal summaries are important for clarifying complex points and ensuring that the audience retains the key information. Lastly, there are signposts. These are brief statements or gestures that indicate where the speaker is in the performance. Signposts not only serve as smooth transitions between ideas but also help to physically guide the audience through the presentation. By using signposts, the speaker communicates both verbally and non-verbally, letting the audience know where they are in the overall flow of the presentation. 
Overall, transitions are essential in performances as they help to maintain the audience's engagement and understanding. By using different types of transitions, speakers can effectively navigate through their ideas and ensure that their message is clear and impactful. As we conclude this lecture keep in mind that the introduction is specifically representing you as the actual performer, and is essential for providing the foundation of your performances, while the transitions help to guide your performance. And with that we will conclude our lecture. Make it a habit to look out for potential introduction material during your analysis stage, and do not be afraid to try different approaches in your performances.